So precious in here, don't even want to move. <laughs> it's mm -hmm. a, wow. <laughs> prayer request here from a, uh, a gentleman and I thought well let's we need to pray about this with you know all of us okay mm -hmm. and he says please pray for my mom her salvation and pray for her healing 
And then he goes on he, and uh, she has lost her hearing and has memory loss and bad posture, and high blood pressure and body pains. Uh, and we just lift her up. Amen. Amen. We just lift her up. Uh, pray for the, you know, and, and he goes on, he says, pray for the removal of debt and financial blessing and financial security for her. Mm -hmm. We just lift her up. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. We speak those things over her. Uh, pray also, and, and he says, please pray for the salvation and excellent health and long life of, of his uncle mm -hmm. also. And, and his aunt, and healing uh, in his mom's boyfriend. Okay, so it sounds like that whole family just needs God. Yeah. Okay, so right now, Father, in the name of Jesus, we lift this family up to you. And just the same as they, huh, they have requested this, this is our contact with them. Their confession of what they want. We believe it now in Jesus' name. We speak healing to those bodies. We speak wholeness in Jesus' name. We speak financial blessing upon those bodies now, those family members now, in those homes now in Jesus. We just speak Jesus in that place right now. And that Jesus, you come and rock that place in Jesus' name. And that that place would be never be the same again. Mm. And we just speak yes. an awakening in the spirit in that place. Yes. In Jesus' yes. name. Yes, yes. Mm. In Jesus' name. And I thank you, Lord, that these things are done and, and are being done, are happening now, so that they would draw closer to you. Yes. And would remove themselves from the lusts of the world. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Father, I, I lift up uh, Cindy Black and the Black family. Lord, I, I just lift them up and, and I thank you that you received, <laughs> you received her husband. Yes. Bruce is with you. Yes. But Lord, I just lift them up to you in Jesus' name. I lift up that family to you in Jesus' name. Mm. Lift up Victor and his continued, his continued uh, the, the health. In Jesus' name. Yeah, COVID, you, you know, I said it at the beginning, and I'll say it now. You have no place. You have no place in that body. You have no place. That body will come back stronger than it was before. In Jesus' name. And I lift up Ed and Lori to you. And again, COVID, you have no place. The infections that, 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 that she has right now in Jesus' name, no, they have no place. Yes. They have no place. We speak healing to those bodies now in Jesus' name. Same with Sharon. We speak healing to her yes. body now in Jesus' yes. name. And strength return quickly in Jesus' yes. name. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And Bonnie. We lift up Bonnie yes. to you. We thank you. We thank you for healing. Continue healing in Jesus' name. Even though, even though there's a, a her body's not understanding or not. no in jesus name it's healed and it's whole nothing missing nothing broken mm -hmm. everything's restored back to the way it should be in jesus yeah. name yes yes father in jesus, jesus name and lord i thank you i thank you uh i thank you that you give uh jason and his family wisdom in helping yes. The, yes. their mom and 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 uh and Ed, in Jesus' name, and any other yes, family Lord. members. Yes. In, in that Jesus. have oh, in Jesus' name. Mm -hmm. Yes. In Jesus' name. I plead the blood of Jesus over Jason and his family, protecting them from yes. that infection. Yes. Hallelujah. I plead the blood of Jesus yes. over them. Yes. Hallelujah. Divine protection, divine yes. protection for them. Yes. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And Lord, I thank you for Melinda. Father, we just mm. lift her up, and I just thank you that you're leading her and guiding her steps. She's She needs to walk away from a bad situation. And Lord God, that there's going to need to be, maybe not in her marriage, but a restoration with her relationship with her children. And not now, but later on, Father God. I ask you, Father God, that you just minister that to her heart. The restoration is coming. 
Well, she needs to be removed. She needs to get out of a toxic situation. And Lord, I just thank you, Father God, that she has great favor with God, great favor with man. And as she gets close to where she knows her spiritual home is, and Father, we just thank you. Yes. We praise you, Father God, that, that you're leading and guiding her steps in Jesus' name. She's born again. She's spirit-filled. She hasn't left you. You have for sure never have left her. And Lord God, I thank you, and I just thank you for your peace and comfort for her in Jesus' name. A restoration in her own heart. Yes. In her own heart. Yes. In her own heart, in yes. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Yeah, come back. 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 No, you're not going to search for for everything and all these wrong reasons in the wrong places. Yeah. You're in search for the true God. Yes. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. And I continue to lift up that young man I've been praying for for a while. I'm yes. He's in his 40s. He's not young, but he's young to me. And Father, we just thank you that you come home. Yeah. Come home. Just come home. Yeah. You're like a prodigal son. Yes. Just come home. Yes. Mom and dad are there waiting for you. <clears throat> Mom and dad are there waiting for you. Hallelujah. And Jesus is even more so with his arms wide open for you. Hallelujah. Yes. Yes. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. <laughs> yes. Amen. 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 Things are happening, people. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, the enemy's moving. Why? He's moving, shouting, he's doing all this stuff. He's, he's doing his part to be like, like a roaring lion. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay? Now, I'm going to share something with you. A roaring lion, there's, there's something that, uh, that the lions roar for a reason. Okay? It's to get people scared and in fear. Mm -hmm. So if they start running away from that sound, and what they end up doing is running right into a trap. Mm -hmm. Because the lionesses are the true... Um, hunters, hunters. Mm -hmm. and so they're waiting on the outskirts of where this is happening and so when you start leaving and running and running away from the enemy in fear all of a sudden there's the lion that's just ready to hunt you down mm -hmm. you see there is no fear yeah fear is real I should say it said that way but, but there is no fear God did not give you a spirit of fear mm -hmm. Bible says he's given you a, a power, a spirit of power, power, mm -hmm. power for what? Power over the enemy. He's given you a, a, a spirit of what? Power, love, sound and love. Fine. What is you know the love? Yeah. Perfect love casts out what? All fear. Mm -hmm. Casts out fear. Yeah. yeah. And his perfect love is shed abroad in each and every one of our hearts. I can just go on and on and on with that scripture. And why Christians are falling into this fear, it's beyond me. It really is. Because they're looking at what's in front of them instead of at Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. Oh, uh, the author and finisher of our faith. And then you you know, he's not given us he's given us a, a he has given us the the spirit of power, spirit of love, and what? A sound mind. So even your own understanding. Mm -hmm. Knows what's right. Yeah. That um, for God's not given us spirit of fear, but of power and love, and of a calm and well balanced mind, and discipline and self control. Mm -hmm. That's amplified. Discipline and self control. <clears throat> it's all good. Yeah. It's all good. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. You ready to start? Yeah, it sounds like we've started. Well, we started. We started at five minutes to yeah. to ten this morning. I yeah. mean, <laughs> it, it, the the power of God was in this place, and we just it, it just started. Mm -hmm. It's like okay, all right, Lord, what do you want to do? Yeah, I just sat back up here and just played chords mm -hmm. and just listened to everybody, and I chime in every once in a while and then get shut down. I just go back and play chords again. You didn't get shut down. We were preaching. We yeah, had they, they were preaching. So, anyway, want to introduce you, uh, those of you that are watching online. I'm Pastor Ray, and this is my wife, Jean. 
And we want to welcome you to the River Stanley yes. Church. Amen? Amen. And uh, if you're here local and you're looking for a home church, we say come be home with us. Yes. Be family with be us. Be family with us. Amen. You can find us online at theriversfc.org. Uh, you, if you need prayer, go go in the same place, theriversfc.org forward slash prayer. Fill out the boxes and we get those requests. That's uh, the one request that we got. We, mm -hmm. we get several requests every week. So. Yeah. And the question I have for you, how can I pray for you? Yeah. That's my question. How can I pray for you? Those of you that are out there, how can I pray for you? Yeah. Send us those requests mm -hmm. so we can be praying. Because I know God answers prayer. Mm -hmm. Every time I minister over in Pakistan, I know God answers prayer. Because there's, we've seen thousands of people mm -hmm. get saved. Amen. We've been seeing thousands of people healed over the years. Okay? Mm -hmm. So, it's happening. I'm going to get my jacket on. Alrighty. I'm getting warm, but I'm also getting cold. So, yeah, so let's get the jacket on. <laughs> get the jacket on. That way I stay warm. That's right. Um, I'm just warming up. Yeah, I'm just warming up. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. It's so true. I mean, I've lost so much weight You know, we those of you that are watching us on Facebook or watching us on YouTube, we lost about 30 pounds in the last year. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
everything. Say everything. Everything. Everything pertaining to what? Life and godliness. His divine power has given us or granted to us everything pertaining to life and godliness. You see in this? Yeah. Let's go on. It says, through the true knowledge of him who called us by his own glory and excellence. I could stop there and go for days. <laughs> Maybe that's why we've been on the same these same set of scriptures for weeks now. Yeah. You know, just it, it, it's just a build upon build upon build. It's a knowing that you know that you know that you know. Mm -hmm. It's a confidence in knowing and understanding that you know that you know that you know. Amen. Amen. Verse four it says, "For by these, by what? Go back up there. The true knowledge, by the glory and excellence." Okay, mm -hmm. by the power, the divine power that has granted us everything, yes. for by these, or for by these, he it says, He has granted to you or to us his precious and magnificent promises. So, because of all this, he's given us the precious and magnificent promises. He says, In order that through these, through these, through this again, through these, through this, uh. Uh, magnificent promises, the precious and magnificent promises. He says, through these, you might become partakers of the divine nature. Now look at that for a second. Stop and look at that. He's given us, he set you up to win. Hello? Amen. He has set you up to win. Oh, Ray, I don't feel much like I'm winning. That's because we don't have confidence in what his word says. Mm -hmm. We're trying to find the winning ways through what the world is doing and what the world says through their wisdom. And he says, no, I've given you that power. I've given, I, you know, I, I've given you true knowledge. I've given you the glory and the excellence. I've given you everything mm -hmm. pertaining to life and godliness. The world hasn't done that. The world hasn't, hasn't given you those things. It doesn't come that way. It doesn't come that way. It comes through the knowledge of Jesus. It comes through the true knowledge. Yes. Yeah. It comes through the true knowledge of Jesus, the grace and peace that is multiplied to you. Are you seeing how to break down scripture and understand it? I mean, it, it, these, these men and women that, that, that reveal, try to translate, reveal it into our language. They're, you know, bless God, they did the best that they could in understanding and how to do it. Sometimes they're doing it, in, in, you know, with, with confusion, turmoil, and, and, and frustrations, and with, with all sorts of stress and pressure over them. Mm -hmm. But all we have to do is just stop and say, Holy Spirit, show me. Mm -hmm. Show me. Show me what this says. And he will show you. And when that happens, as that's happening, that's when the word becomes alive and sharper. And active. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yeah. And able to divide between the bone and marrow. That's when the word becomes. Yeah. Right? Amen? Amen? He goes on and he says, he, he says that you might become partakers of the divine nature. You know, that's, that, he's laid all this out. It's like the red carpet. Okay? Until somebody steps on the red carpet, the red carpet's just sitting there looking nice. Mm -hmm. Am I right? Mm -hmm. And the crowds are on either side to see who's going to step out of the vehicles to come onto the red carpet. The red carpet is there. Those precious and magnificent promises are there. Amen? Amen. And it's when we get out of our situation, out of that car, and step onto that red carpet because we're saved. That's when all of a sudden we realize that we have everything. The enemy, the world doesn't want you to realize that. They think that they have the answers for you. And they think, you know, and religion says that it has the answer. And religion doesn't. Religion doesn't have the answer. Well, wait a minute. Aren't you a religious group? No. That's the world's term. We are a church. We are a Christian church. We are a church that's being led by the Spirit of God. Amen? Mm. And that's the difference. That's the difference. 
And, you know, I don't tell anybody that our way is the only way. I tell them just look in this book and find, figure it out. That's why when some people ask me, you know, uh, to pray for something, I say, you know, I'll ask them, what scripture are you reading? What scripture are you standing on? What scriptures do you have? Yeah, I'm starting to get into you guys' Bible study a little bit. And I wasn't even there. Holy <laughs> Spirit <laughs> was. Yeah, Holy Spirit was. But the thing is, is the three, the, the, all the meetings that we had at Man's Camp, that's the, that was the, the theme the whole time. It was based towards men more, but that was the theme the whole mm -hmm. time. Wow. Okay? It go, he, he goes on here, he says, that you might become partakers of divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world by lust. What's that talking about? Your salvation. You've escaped the world. You're no longer part of the world because you are saved. You are now partakers of his divine nature. Are you hearing this? Seeing this? Okay. And because we are now partakers of his divine nature, we have everything and we walk in everything and we... We are set up to win. You know, what parent in their right mind don't, doesn't want their child to succeed? Doesn't want their child to do more than what they did? I said right mind. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? Some parents are out there. They don't want their children to succeed. God's not that way. If you ask for bread, he's not going to give you a rock. Try to crunch on that for a while. Sure. Hello? Mm -hmm. If you ask for meat, he's not going to hand you a serpent. Mm -hmm. Even though it is a protein source. I'm going to it to you dead. You, you follow what I'm saying? God is here to take care of you. He, he says, I take care of you. I have everything set up for you. It is yours. It is yours. Just take it. It's like the prodigal son. When he left, he left with his inheritance. He thought he had taken his fair share, all of it, and left. <laughs> and he comes back because he thought it was better to be a slave. And that's the way, that's the, way the church is right now. The church believes that it's better to be to come to God and be a slave than it is to be to be a slave in the world. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To be caught up in the world. That's not God's best. Because when the prodigal son came back, what was the first thing that he did? He kissed him, then he put a ring on his finger. Sandals on his feet. Sandals on his feet. The cloak. And he put the cloak on him. He dressed him mm -hmm. so that everybody would know my son is back. My son is here. You follow? Mm -hmm. That's God's best for us. Mm -hmm. God's best is, of course, to be jealous of what others are doing and how they're doing it and, and, you know, or what they're not doing. God wants us to take this message forth and give it to others and to help others with it. And it happens because we walk by faith. It happens because we have an understanding of what the Word says. It happens because we're able to see it come to pass. Well, Ray, why doesn't it come to pass? Why am I not seeing it? The question I have is, are we, you know, we in our thoughts and in our actions say that we are totally wrapped up into the Word, but are we? That's the question we have to ask ourselves. Mm -hmm. That question was laid out on, uh, you know, to us this week. Are we? And the explanation, the, the explanation that, that, that uh, uh, Tom Fields gave was one of the best ones I've ever heard. I have it written down, and you'll hear this over and over and over again. And it goes like this. I'm going to change the, uh, change the illustration to it. But uh, it, go, it, it goes like this. You need your car washed, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm going to wash your car. Okay. <laughs> you, do you trust that I'll wash your car? 
And yes. then I'll get it done? Yes. Yeah. Hey, you know, have, I know there's been times that, yeah, as a father, I've tried to do the best I could to give you what you've asked for and what I said I was going to give you. Mm -hmm. But pretty much I've fulfilled that, right? Yeah. Okay. Right? Yeah. And so he knows his car is going to be washed. Still out there, it's dirty, but he knows it's going to be washed. Mm -hmm. He trusts me, knows that I'm going to wash it. Amen? Amen. That's the way we approach the Word of God. Is that we know and trust that he's going to do something because he says it, or that's how we should do it. Mm -hmm. But what we tend to do is, I'm not going to wash this car. You understand? I'm not going to, going to wash this car. But what we, what we do in, in our understanding and belief of it is that we, the only thing we heard or the only thing that he heard is that dad's going to wash my car. And so he's standing on faith that, 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 that dad's going to wash his car. But he's never really heard me say that I'm going to wash his car. There's many times that we go in believing that we're healed and whole. But we really don't know what God says about us being healed and whole. What it says about, you know, what the scriptures say. You know, God says that he supplies all of our needs, but we really don't get into what the Bible says about what, the, what he says he'll do to supply our needs. Mm -hmm. What he has done. And so what happens is that, that word that we're hearing, you know, that, that, that we're just assuming at times, and that confessing that we're doing, it's a logos and not a rhema. See, when, 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 when God says, I'm going to do this, that word is now a rhema. It's going to happen. Amen? Amen. And when we, when we assume is the only way I know how to say it, but when we assume that's, that somebody's going to do something because we confess it to happen, and that it doesn't happen, that's when you get people frustrated in the confession. That's when you get people that are frustrated in mm -hmm. faith. That's when you get people that are frustrated in, well, I guess it's not God's will. You understand that? Did that make that clear? Yeah. Okay. And so, you know, yeah. Trust me, if I get a chance this week, I will wash this car. <laughs> okay. I'll confess it now. He's probably going to try to wash my truck before I can wash his car. <laughs> just looking at He's like, what? You know, what? <laughs> but see, that's what happens a lot of times is that we confess things and yet the person hasn't really said it. Mm -hmm. All right? Mm -hmm. So, in looking at this, God says that he, supply, he has supplied those things pertaining to life and godliness. Yeah. It is ours, right? Yes. Turn over to Philippians 4, verse 19. Let's look at that. Am I making sense this morning? Mm -hmm. Yes. Philippians 4, verse 19. It says, And my God shall supply all or everything, all your needs, according to his riches and glory in Christ Jesus. Yeah. It says that it's, it, you know, he shall supply it. Well, you know, wait a minute. If we just read over that and yet we don't believe it or we don't really absorb it in, if I can say it that way, then that word is still there. It, it's a logos. It's, there's no life to it. Yeah. There's no revelation to it. There's no action being done on it. But when we see this word and it's like, yeah, okay, that's mine. I, I, he says he supplies all my needs. Guess what? I, my needs are supplied. Mm -hmm. And it might be a week or two, and we're, you know, and, and, and there, because the Bible says that there's a testing of our faith produces what? Patience. Patience. Endurance. It produces patience. And the testing of our faith produces patience. Why? Why? Because the enemy tries to stop this stuff from happening for you. He wants, he wants to prove God out to be the worst father that there is. And yet he is the father of all fathers. Amen? Amen. And it comes down to, do we really believe this word? 
do we really trust this word? You know, we can all say, yeah, 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 I do, I do, I do, I do. But you have to ask yourself, is that is, is it just the word? You know, yeah, I read it, and it's like, okay. Or is it, no, that's mine. That's mine. Gene and I were discussing this last night. Bible says, and we've had people come up to us and test us on this. Because they've heard us say it. And I still stand by it. Okay? The Bible says that he has given me cities I did not build and houses, plural, houses I did not fill. Okay? Well, if I have houses and cities I did not build, I have buildings. I have a, I, you know, I have a place to live and I don't have to rent anymore. Mm -hmm. I have houses. Yes. Well, Ray, you're still renting. I mean, that, that was the first thing that somebody came at me at with. You're still renting. God's moving. He has it. God, is ha God has it. Well, why don't you see it? God has it. And I, I finally looked at the one person. And I said, can you see that with me? That's what the scripture says. So can you see that? And a lot of times we can't get ourselves past the questioning of the scripture. And that questioning bring, stirs up a doubt. It's not a faith, but that question of the scripture stirs up a doubt. Did God really say? Oh, where did that, where did that question come out at? Who was tempted with that question? Come on now. I know I got scholars in here. Who, who, who's questioned with that? With that statement? Did God really say? Satan's question, you know, laid the question out, but who did he lay the, the question to? Who did he give it to? To Eve, didn't he? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. What did he also tell Jesus when he when he was out uh, uh, out in the wilderness for forty days? What did he question him with? Ifs. Ifs. See, a lot of times we get ifs caught up into the what God is saying. And the enemy wants us there. Religion wants us there. Because that's the only way religion knows how to share this stuff. It's the, you know, there, there is no this. I hear it all the time. Well, God told me no, I couldn't have that. Where? Where did he say in his word that he said no? Give me scripture and verse for that. Well, <laughs> this is a, Paul's thorn. Paul asked three times if this disappeared. Oh, really? I opened it up and I said, show me. Ray, that's kind of harsh. No, I want people to learn that, that some of the things that we've heard are a loose translation of what God really said. You understand? Mm -hmm. And we want to get into what God really said and we want to get that so deep inside of us that, that when somebody touches us, that's what comes out is what God really said. Mm -hmm. And not what we feel, or not what we what we sense, or not you know, not every, our situation. Because the Bible says to speak to your mouth, not talk about it. Yeah. See, when we talk about our mountain, the word is only a logos. There's no life to it. But when we speak to that mountain, that becomes a rhema. There's life to that. It has to change. It has to move in yes. Jesus' name. And that's the difference. You following? Amen. And so when I when I announce that I'm going to wash his car, and I tell him, "Hey, I'm going to wash your car," he knows I'm going to wash it. That's the same thing as when when I'm standing there and I don't feel right. I know what the word says. When things started happening la last week, and I I know what the word says. I, I don't have this. Why? Because God didn't say I had it. Mm -hmm. So why are we taking something that God, God didn't say we have? No. Oh, that'll preach. <laughs> Do you understand? There's times we take things that aren't ours. It ain't, they are not legally ours, but we fight tooth and nail to keep them. And God says, no, 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 no. no. I've already relieved you of that. I've already delivered you from that. My covenant is now this. 
That's all been, you know, you don't have to worry about sickness and de disease. You don't have to worry about de being defeated. The Bible says that you are more than conquerors. The Bible says that I, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. The Bible says that I am a winner and not a loser. Stop signing for the package and return to sender. Yeah, return yes. to sender. I like that. Stop signing for that package. It's a counterfeit. It's an anti-Bible. It's an anti-Christ. And we're following after his words more than we're following after God. There's the spirit of the Antichrist that's here on earth, I believe, right now. Mm -hmm. I don't know if the Antichrist himself is, but there's a spirit of. I don't know. I don't care. I don't plan being here when he's exposed and he steps forward. So I don't care who it is. You can tell me anybody. I don't care. Mm -hmm. I'm following Jesus. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. Well, what about sister so-and-so? She had this and this and this, and she believed the word. Do you know everything in her heart? Yeah. I mean, it's a tragedy. It really is. Trust me, when somebody leaves the earth early, that means that they did not fulfill God's full purpose for them. When they die of a sickness and disease. Now, there are those that, that their body just stops working. And they leave. I know, I, our spiritual father. He was just having brunch with, with best friends. Just sitting there at the table. Having, having brunch. And he looked over, he looked over to, to his wife. I love you. He was gone. That's how fast it happened. You know that, that there are those out there, and, and I almost climbed inside of one of them. <laughs> Lanny had to stop me, okay? But there was one. There was people out there that literally started talking about how he was the, you know, he was he was the father of the faith movement, how how he believed in healing and all this other stuff, and, and yet he died. Mm. You know they did an autopsy on him. And there was nothing wrong with his body. In fact, his heart, they figured out, was the heart of a 50-year-old. Oh, and he was 80-something. You understand? That's awesome. Why? You know, I don't have it. You, you take it up with God. But don't question me on it. But that's just telling me your doubt of where you're standing. Mm -hmm. Your lack of faith in healing. You follow? Mm-hmm. It's your lack of faith in prosperity. God wants you to prosper. Why? Because there's a whole world out there that needs to get saved. We believe, we believe in the government and what the government is saying more than what we believe in what actual numbers are and what the actual, what, what the actual word of God says. Now there's, uh, you know, preachers back there. Oh, no, no, no. I, yeah, I'm, I'm with her. But I'm just saying, as the church, we do. Because I see it all the time. I post things and I get I get all these religious zealots. Mm. I'll call them. Not Jesus zealots, religious zealots. That will all of a sudden go in there and chime in and start, well, God said, no, don't give me this, well. You know, when you start saying, well, yeah, no. That's telling me, well, how stupid you are. <laughs> yeah, I said that. <laughs> there is no well. There, <laughs> It's the word of God. Yes. Am I being a little hard? No, how stupid can you get and still breathe? <laughs> <laughs> how stupid can you get and still drive? I mean, it just, but think about it. There, there's what? I heard a statistic and this is prop. You know, I don't know if these numbers are right. I should have wrote them down, but I'm just going to use it. There, there's 8 billion people on the earth. 8 billion. All right, 7.9, I think the number actually is. Mm -hmm. Okay? You ready for this? Mm -hmm. About 250,000 of them, or 250 million, I'm sorry, 250 million of them have been sick with COVID, been affected by COVID. Mm -hmm. Rough estimate, that's 2.5 percent 
of the population of the earth. Yep. The known population of the earth. And we're freaking out because of that. Now, don't get me wrong. I know a pandemic is serious. Yes. I, know, I, I know it's serious. But we are freaking out and we're allowing the government to take over everything and tell us when to breathe, when to go into the bathroom and wipe ourselves, when to do all that. We're allowing the government to do this. You understand? God set it up that we would have freedom from the government. Yeah. And that the government is controlled by us. Mm -hmm. And yet we've allowed the government to control us. It's unreal. It's unreal. And if you're a part of a church, if you say you're part of the body of Christ and you believe that, you should be ashamed. And if you voted for any of those parties that believe in, in having complete control over us, you should be ashamed. Because there's only one that should have that control. And his name is Jesus Christ. And he died for you to be free. Yes. And this nation was created so that we'd be free. Yes. So that we'd have the liberties to worship him as I please. Not to, not to live under the government mandates that you, know, you can only have 20 people in a service. Go ahead. I want to hear your, your responses. You just got more services. <laughs> <laughs> like a movie theater in the next filming. <laughs> the next filming. Sorry, people. I'm getting worked up over this. And I can't believe how the church is being so stupid. It's those subtleties that go against the word of God that we start accepting. Mm -hmm. That's all it is. It's the subtleties. And if we believe in the subtleties more than we believe in the word of God, we're not going to see healing. You're not going to see divine health in your life or in your family's life. You're not going to see your, your, your needs being met. Many of you that believe that way, even though you say you are saved, but you, you, you believe that way, you need to check your salvation. Amen. I heard this statement. I had, you know, This is a strong statement, okay? You know, if, if you're not reading the Bible, you're not saved. And then I heard this statement also from a pastor at the meeting. If you're not taking notes when you're reading your Bible, you're not saved. How am I doing so far? Good. Well, my wife says good. Everybody else is smiling at me. <laughs> you understand? Why do I say that? Because we're not, you know, we're, we're crying, bawling, and squalling, begging God to do something. When he says that he'll do it, and all we have to do is change the word that we're hearing and bring it alive into our life. We have to accept it to ourselves. Faith comes by Hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. And hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing. hearing and hearing by the word of God. So your faith comes by hearing the word of God. Yes. <clears throat> so if you're not, you know, when you're reading your Bible, you should be hearing the word also. When you're when, when you're out and about throughout your day, don't put country music in. That talks about slapping grandma upside the head and kicking a dog and biting your cat. No, get into somebody who's going to preach the word of God to you. Amen. 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 I'm wound up today, guys. Can you tell? I need to go to another man's camp. I can tell that already. Oh. Come on, let's get some wisdom going here. Yeah. Let's get some knowledge and understanding. Because the things you hear and the things you listen to oh, yeah. are the things that we place value to. If you want to change the outcome, you've got to do things differently. You so change. if you want to change the outcome, you've got to renew your mind and be transformed by what? 
word. The word. The word. And so it comes down to those things that you listen to are the things that you value. There you go. The things you listen to are the things that you value. Okay? That is so vitally important. Yes, and so if all... Huh, what's that? It's extremely important. It, you know, if, we, if all we're doing is listening to things about, uh, about death and debt and, and sickness and, and, and divorce and how, how you know, our spouse is sleeping with, with, with somebody else's spouse... If that's all we're listening to, guess what we're valuing? Mm. The lusts of the world. Yep. And God says, I come and laid everything out to you and given it to you on a red carpet. All you've got to do is walk in it. Accept it and take it as your own. And why did I do that? So that you get out of that car and start walking on that carpet. Mm -hmm. So that you have a relationship with me. Mm -hmm. It's that simple. It's that simple. Yeah, I know. I just blew up a bunch of people online. Ask me if I care. <laughs> Ask me. In fact, I, I'm going to challenge those of you that that if I slapped you in the face online, I want you to I want you to send me a post. Mm -hmm. I want you to respond to it and tell me what you think. Let's put it this way. I'm going to challenge you even more. Do you have the guts to? Mm -hmm. Because I have the guts to defend what I stand for. And what I believe. Mm -hmm. Am I still doing okay, Teresa? <laughs> Did you get anything this morning? Oh, yes. Amen. It comes down to... That if God said it, I believe it, that settles it. Mm -hmm. yeah. Now I'm going to say, in every one of your Bibles, okay, now I have, I have two young people in here, they use their phones as their Bibles, I understand. Mm -hmm. But they also have paper, okay? Because I get, you know, what happens if all of a sudden we get a point in time? Mm -hmm. Jesus hasn't returned yet to take his, his children home, his people home. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden, we're unable to use our applications. Yeah. Or a seller flare hits us. Yeah. There's, there's several things that could happen. Mm -hmm. Your electronic device no longer works. Yeah. How, you know, can you find those scriptures in your Bible? Okay. Those ones that are supposed to be in your heart. Okay. Mm -hmm. Here you go. This is what I do to my Bibles. They're highlighted, they're underlined, I have Greek written off on the side, I have Hebrew written off on the side, I have meanings, translations, I have, I have it all over the place. I even have the Amplified written in here. Now if you have a Bible that you can't do that to, that's fine. Let me know and I'll give you a Bible that you can do this to. Because when you do this, what does that do? That helps you to retain it to where that word becomes more of a rhema to you, to where it becomes more of a life to you. Because now all I got to do, all right, I'm going over here. Oh, there it is. Yeah. Why does everybody need to be praying in tongues? Ten reasons. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I, I've had somebody tell me one time, you know, ask, ask me, why do I need to be praying in tongues? I said, well, I can give you ten. Can you give me one why you shouldn't? He says, yeah, it's of the devil. I said, so Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God is devil. <laughs> I told you, I mean, you go in here and you can read it all over the place. One of my favorite scriptures in here, one of my favorites is of his fullness. We've all received. We have all, we have all received. Grace upon grace. Mm -hmm. That word grace, the definition is unmerited favor. It's the power of God. It's the unmerited power of God. It's, it's unfiltered power of God towards you to do and fulfill all that he wants you to do. Mm -hmm. I have the notes right here. I can preach that forever. Well, I'm not a preacher, right? I don't want... No. 
I want you to, what I want you to do is do the things that help you to learn from this. Because that's what I did at first. I was doing it to help me to learn. To give me a better understanding of it. Since we're out of his, in the Amplified, I have it written right here. In the Amplified, out of his fullness, abundance. We've all received, all had a share, and all supplied with. Mm -hmm. One grace after another. And spiritual blessing upon spiritual blessing. And even favor upon favor and gift heaped upon gift. And this is the confidence that we have before him. That if we ask anything according to his will, mm -hmm. he hears us. Yes. <coughs> Let's talk about the rain. Mm -hmm. And if we know that he hears us in whatever we ask, we know we have the request that we've asked of him. Now the question I have for you. Did he tell you he'd wash, his, wash your car? Did he tell you, you know, did he tell you, you know, your car would be washed? Mm -hmm. Well, let me ask it this way. Did he tell you that you're healed? Yes. Where does it say that? What scriptures do you have? What are you standing on? Did he say that he gives you financial blessing? Yes. Did he say that he, you know, he gives you houses, buildings, cities? Hmm? I'll give you one. A lot, a lot of us forget this. Every place in which the sole of your foot treads, it's yours. Mm. Yeah, that's exactly your whole neighborhood. As you walk your neighborhoods, those neighborhoods, are, your, your neighbors think that that's theirs. <laughs> Hello? No, spiritually, it's yours. <laughs> if you stand on that scripture. Yeah. Yeah. But if you're like most, now I say most. Now I'm, I'm not talking about everybody in here. And I believe I'm not talking about some of you out there. But if, if we're like most, we just read it and pass it by. We want the new revelation of God's word. God's trying to get you to, to a, he's trying to get to you to a place where he can illuminate the revelation of his word. Mm. And that's what it's about. Really? I've been doing this now for an hour? Yeah. <laughs> Gosh. Where'd time go when I'm having fun? <laughs> it flies. Did you guys get anything this morning? Oh, yes. Did you out there get anything? Question I have. Are you ready to step on the red carpet? Ooh, that's a title. That is a good one. Are you written? I'm always trying to find a title for these things when I post them. Are you ready to step on the red carpet? God's laid out the carpet. You're still stuck in that limousine, the lusts of the world. Not to say that riding around the limousine's wrong. But we're still tied up into the lusts of the world. Are you ready to step out of that mm -hmm. and get on the red carpet with God? Yeah. Amen? Mm -hmm. If that's you, and you say, yes, pastor, I'm ready. That's all you have to say is, yes, I'm ready. But then I'm going to do something else. I want you to confess Jesus as Lord because we have no problem doing that. But we have a problem confessing his blessings. And soon I'll be getting into the blessings. Mm -hmm. We have trouble with that. Why? It's ours. It all came through salvation. So when we confess him as Lord and believe in our hearts that he, ra he was raised from the dead, we are saved. Those blessings are ours. That red carpet is ours. And that's all you have to do. It's real simple. It's found in Romans 10, 9 and 10. It says that if you confess him as Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. So do that with me. Say, Father, Father right, now, right now, I confess, I confess. Jesus, is Lord. Jesus is Lord. Jesus, Jesus you're, my Lord. you're my Lord. And I believe in my heart, in my heart that you're raised from the dead. And because, from the dead. and because of my confession and my belief, I'm born again. I am sozo. I am sozo. The Greek word for saved. The Greek word for saved. Amen. Amen. That means I'm I'm delivered. 
You know, I'm delivered out. You know, I'm delivered out of that limo and placed onto that red carpet. This is the confidence. Now, if you prayed that. Let us know so we can get some materials into your hands so we can help you to grow. So we can pray for you and also help you to find a good church if your church isn't meeting. I can't believe how the statistics out there of churches that still aren't meeting. I heard that there's a few churches around here that are struggling real bad because they're, you know, they haven't been meeting. It's like, you gotta be kidding me. Who's gonna follow the government mandates? Oh, wait a minute. We're supposed to. No, no, we're not. You know, it's God first. Yes. And if he tells us, tells you to do something and he's laid out, I'm getting ready to fire it up again. <laughs> and he's ready to, you know, he's told you to do something. You better do it. Amen. Amen. You better do it. So if you're looking for a church, we want to help you find a good church. Mm -hmm. We have relations with thousands of churches around the world. There was just, what, eight of us that were at man's camp. They are here in the state. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I know of another 20 that in the state that weren't there that I have relationships with. So we have a lot. Amen? Mm -hmm. It's up to you. It's up to you. Just go online to theriversfc.org forward slash prayer. Fill out the boxes. Send it to us. We'll get that report. And it'll show up on a piece of paper just like this. And then this is my connecting point to you. And we pray. And we pray. Yeah. And then we expect. Yes. Mm -hmm. Amen? Because I know it'll happen. Yeah. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Again, I'll ask, did you get something? Mm -hmm. Did you out there get something? Go online to theriversfc.org forward slash give. And give as the Lord leads in your heart. I'm not telling you how much to give. I'm telling you just share as the Lord leads. Amen? Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Why don't you know something here as we sign off? That God loves you and that we love you and praying for you and that Jesus, Jesus is, is Lord. Lord. Be blessed and we'll see you another time.